Hey, welcome back. So here we are, end of February, and I wanted to give my final thoughts on Suicide Squad, just in sort of the form of like a little mini review, and then also an update on where the channel's at. So, one month of Suicide Squad, played about 20 hours of the game. It, as I said in my one hour minute on the game, was a lot better than I thought it was going to be, honestly. I really, especially after playing the first hour of Gotham Knights, which was a travesty, was fully expecting this game to come out and be a, a disaster. I spent $120 on the early, early edition to find out. And like I said, I, I really was pleasantly surprised at how much better the game was than I thought that it would be. So that definitely informed the score of the one hour minute, which was a clean seven. You have fake news. You have an agenda. Uh, the numbers that you gave are wrong. The game probably at that time was realistically high six, but I think because of the expectation on it, that's what put it right at the clean seven. Having said that, in the weeks that have followed, updates that have happened in the game, the collapse of the game's community, concurrent players online, it's not been good, anything. And uh, we're at the point now where Warner Brothers has told their shareholders that they're, pub you know, publicly that they're disappointed with the game. The, the future of Rocksteady, I hope, is not in question. And that was something that I had said in my initial review was that Rocksteady really deserves a lot of praise for this game. And I still stand by that. I think that despite, despite a couple of things, despite number one being put in a basically impossible position, in my opinion, by your publisher in terms of a mandate of a game within a specific live service genre. And then partway through the development to have that essentially reset and be told no don't make this anymore you know make it still a multiplayer thing but you know light on the live service elements and uh single player ability and everything that came out about the game before release looked like a disaster there was an incredibly cluttered ui the gameplay didn't look good. It looked like a mess. The game was also delayed several times. Not always a bad sign, but certainly in this case, there was real cause for concern. And like I said, that's why I've definitely maintained that Rocksteady deserves a lot of praise for what they were able to pull off here. Despite that, and then despite also a significant portion of their brain trust leaving in terms of several key leadership positions, being vacated. So with all that considered, I think it is fair to say the game came out as a six, strong six, probably a six, six, eight, six, nine. Since release has faltered and had several issues, frankly, the future of the game does, I think, somewhat seem in question. We'll see. The first season is about to come out in March, so I'll probably do a little revisit at some point just to see what they've added, how they tweak the game. We've seen this happen frequently, not with a, a live service game necessarily, but with several different games that have come out in poor states and been elevated through updates. And certainly this game, I would argue, came out in a better state than many of those and has room to really get a lot better and not be something of $120 value, but if you can get people, if you can put that game on Game Pass, if you can get people in on a, a cheap entry fee, and if you can play this game, you know, multiplayer, I, I, I think there is some extra fun to be had there for sure. I, I played the whole way through single player and I still found it to be, it starts very strong and then I would say it lags as it goes. I heard people complaining a lot about escort missions and certainly it was interesting because when I was maybe the first like 10 hours of the game or so, I would say I, I didn't really experience that, but definitely as we get towards the back end of the game, after Green Lantern, I would say they start to pick up and the game feels a little more like it it's falling apart. 
I think there's a lot of potential there. There's a whole multiverse introduced, obviously, and so that kind of lets Rocksteady do whatever they want, basically, with this game and with future games. And I hope that they do get to make another game in this universe as they've said they want to. They are obviously very talented and they really care about the universe, clearly. And as someone who's like uh, somewhat of a comic fan, a little bit of a comic movie fan, I wouldn't say I'm an expert by any means. They seem to really care about the DC stuff and they seem to, you know, I'm always finding out new characters, learning new things from their games. This game is the worst game that Rocksteady's ever made, okay? So if we want to just put that out there, that's totally fine to say and I don't mind saying it because it's true. And the Arkham series of Asylum, City, and Night are just uh, uh, excellent games. And you can see that with the player Spike on Arkham Knight. You know, and you hope... First of all, obviously the developers see that and realize like your work is appreciated greatly. You have really molded the landscape of superhero games, modern superhero games. And I think that's like really important to remember too. Rocksteady is like very key in basically the way that superhero game combat works more or less these days. So I just think that's fair to point out. And I think that Warner Brothers has made a lot of questionable or or discovery, you know, whatever, however that parent company is set up now has made a lot of questionable decisions. And certainly the genesis of this game would be indication of more of that. It's very unfortunate because this game definitely is a lot better than it had any right to be. I feel like it's probably the second best live service game out there uh, in terms of things that aren't a battle royale. So, you know, we're not counting PUBG, Fortnite, Apex. So obviously we're just counting a a large part of the market. But my point on that is more Destiny was basically the only live or Destiny, Destiny 2, the Destiny series was the only live series sort of single player live series molded you know multiplayer single player type game that had really worked until now I would argue and I really do think that this game works in a lot of ways in a lot of ways that I didn't expect it to work the base gameplay is much better than I thought it would ever be especially after Gotham Knights where the movement and the combat of that just felt terrible from the go and in this, immediately, the movement is very good. Uh, all the characters have slightly different movement styles. I personally, I, I think he's probably the easiest, but like I like Deadshot or Captain Boomerang, I would say probably the most for their movement styles. King Shark's also really good. Harley, I just still haven't quite gotten my head around the grapple drone mechanic. And I feel like if I played her a bit more, I've played everyone pretty evenly, but if I focused on her specifically, I think that I could really get that down. And it's probably the best actual style, but... Um, they're all good. Combat's decent. But for a game that's basically, you know, primarily range-based weapons versus melee, which is what Rocksteady had been known for, and obviously, like I said earlier, perfected the formula on, in my opinion, this game does combat a lot better than I thought that it would also. Uh, it does at times feel a bit like I'm just mashing buttons and stuff, but I think it's probably also a skill issue for me. So I feel like people who are really good at this game are mixing everything in there. It looks nice, sounds nice. It actually has a really good uh, sort of... The story beats... (laughs) It's going to sound bad in a way, but I think it's good also. The story beats that are more about the characters that aren't the Suicide Squad, so that are more about the heroes interacting with each other, are actually the more interesting pieces, in my opinion, because that's... You know, obviously Rocksteady wanted to do a Superman game. I think that's pretty well known at this point. But they didn't get to do that. They would make a great one. They would make a great Wonder Woman game. Wonder Woman is amazing in this game. Obviously, they made several great Batman games. I think they can make a good Flash game, Green Lantern, whatever. I think if you gave them another game to make in the DC Universe, they give them a Justice League game. So, anyway, um, I think that pretty much caps it off. I think at this point, like I said, the updates have been brutal for Suicide Squad. The most recent one has broken big parts of the game. I logged back in to play a little bit on my Xbox, which had apparently been a console that hadn't had too many issues. I ran into the issue they've been having where you complete a mission and then it won't load the map that you're supposed to go back to again. So you have to quit out and you lose all your progress. So that's obviously super disappointing. Uh, I'll go check it out when the March update drops and hopefully they fix some stuff. That's it. The game will not last long. 
if that continues. So that's all I'll say about that. Yeah, I hope for better things for it, but we'll see because... Uh... So at this point, um, we got to say the game's like... <clears throat> I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be generous, but we got to say the game's a 5-7 at this point. It is. It just is. I hope that it gets fixed. I hope that it gets back up there because I think that it really can be a week 7, like maybe even a 7-1. Seven three, I'm probably being like way too generous there, but something under a seven five. Rocksteady's still great. I hope that they get a chance to make another game and not a live service game, please. Moving on, just a small update from the channel. Uh, me, uh, High Dose, or some of you know me as Pat on some of my other channels. So I have a couple other channels. When this video drops. Tomorrow, Friday, March 1st, a uh, video on my other channel, Other Spaces, where I just sort of put like all my things that aren't gaming or music related uh, is going to drop. So if you want to take a look at that, I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, here, uh, this is where I found a really good niche of like, or a groove, I guess, of like, yeah, I can consistently drop stuff uh, every single day. So I have stuff uh, well into March. Don't see that slowing down at any point. The workflow is very reasonable, so that's great. Uh, other spaces, it'll be a monthly thing um, with then content dropping weekly, uh, at least every Friday. You know, hopefully a little bit more than that if I can get some more content out of uh, each specific interview um, that I'm doing. But that'll at least be every Friday, and then every month it resets. So every month it's a new interview dropping. Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, so far, I've got it planned out for March and April, and I should have stuff for May and June. And, and then, yeah, Sound Spaces, my main channel that I was doing last year that fell off, like, May-ish, I want to say, with actually, like, a super ironically titled album. Like, that, it was, like, called, like, The Last Record Album or something. So one of my buddies was like, yeah, I thought it was, like, the last one. I'm like, nah, it was just... Anyway, uh, yeah, I did... I still have the whole script for the next one and like yeah i don't know like uh life just gets really crazy sometimes but also um with that channel i felt like i wanted to make the videos like a higher production quality like spend longer on them basically and like sort of uh kind of like if you look at the santana one like do a bit more like what i did with that one where i was able to like source some more visuals and um so anyway all this to say because I've also got more stuff planned for the Screen Space channel in addition to like what I've been doing. So there's going to be one, there's going to be more one hour minutes. Like I'm hoping like every week basically like get a new one hour minute. And that way some new games that come out, I always have the option of doing that. I'm thinking like Saturday drops for those. And then uh, I've got some more content with Ming coming. Uh, both, a bunch of stuff anyway. So stuff with Ian, like, I don't know, and that's not for this channel, that's for other spaces, but there's a bunch of, there's going to be a lot of stuff this year. So sound spaces, I'm thinking I'm going to do those monthly also, uh, a record a month kind of thing, and then give it the time to, I'm still, I think, going to do the listening the same way, where it's like three times, but I think I might space them out a bit more and like let the script gestate a bit more and then give myself more time to edit it, make it really nice, have all the shorts set up really good um because i think that can definitely like go to the next level but it just needs more uh tlc so we'll see but anyway um i probably have talked for too long as i reach forward to yeah all right i'm gonna call it there so i think that's it i think that's all i wanted to say i don't know uh this video took me forever to make because i'm a horrible procrastinator so yeah that's me but anyway I love you guys. Uh, thanks for everything. This month has been crazy just with like the views on the shorts and stuff uh, have been great. And uh, yeah, um, every month I'm hoping we'll just like progress and get like more formatted, more set up, um, have more stuff dropping on the other channels. They'll all go back and forth to each other. Love you guys.